Hey guys, this is Charles Blair, the mad scientist. And on behalf of my beautiful wife, Tammy Blair, and I, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to this video. Now, this is going to be an intensive deep dive into working with virtual assistants. But before we get into all this great information, I need you to do a favor for me. If you have not subscribed to the channel, I need you to go ahead and do so. Today, I want you to also hit that like. Don't forget to do the notification. And of course, anytime you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section today. For everybody who are brand new to subscribing to the channel today, I got a special bonus. Now, bonus number two. I'm going to actually give you the sample post that we have and that we've used to hire VAs in our real estate business to do cold calling. So you're going to get that. All you have to do is just leave a comment. Now let's go ahead and get started. Right now, I'm going to pull up on my screen one of the actual sites out there that you can use to hire virtual assistants. Now remember, this video is all about getting the best virtual assistant to do cold calling for your real estate business. And there's some great sites out there. The information you're gonna to learn today will be used, you can use on sites such as Fiverr, uh, Get a Freelancer, uh, Upwork, but I'm going to show you how we're doing it on a site called onlinejobs.ph. It's basically an employment hiring site in the Philippines. Now, it's a little pricey. To be a member of this site is about $99 a month. But remember, the information I'm going to share with you, you can use it with any of the sites, like I mentioned earlier. So don't think you have to sign up for this site to apply the different information that I'm going to give you. Now, as far as the different jobs you can get your VAs to do, it is unbelievable the amount of work you can get done. You can have your VAs do all sorts of things, such as copywriting, uh, cold calling, uh, lead management, uh, video design, uh, I mean, you name it, social uh, search engine marketing, search engine optimization, and the price that you have to pay these VAs does not have to cost you a fortune. I mean, you can pay your VAs anywhere for programmers, anywhere from $350 to $1,000. Designers, we're doing $400 to $1,100. SEO specialists, $300 to $1,100. Social media experts, $300 to $600. Uh, virtual assistants, $300 all the way up to $800. And we're talking about full-time employees to work in your business per month. Now, don't look at these numbers that I'm reading off of this screen as etched in stone because by no way, shape, or form is that what you have to pay. You dictate the actual salary that you want to pay and then the actual VAs will respond to your post based on that salary requirement. So that's the first thing I want you to understand. This is just a barometer of all the different uh, categories that you can have VAs for. By no way, shape, or form do I want you to think that this is the only dollar amount you can pay them. I've had VAs in the past that we paid $2.50 an hour. So don't look at these numbers as being etched in stone. Now, the key thing is that you need to know exactly what you want done when working with VAs prior to you hiring that VA. You had to, have most, in most situations, done the work yourself. So in other words, I don't want to hire a person to do work for, for example, this video is about cold calling, and I've never done cold calling before. So how am I going to manage that person who is doing my cold calling for me if I've never done it before? So if you want to hire somebody to do cold calling on Mojo, you should have been doing cold calling on Mojo Dollar. You want to have somebody do cold call on Zen Call. You should have been doing cold calling on Zen Call so that you can manage that person properly. So the first thing I want you to learn and understand that you should have done the work at least for a month or two before 
you hire a VA to do it because there's no way you're going to be able to manage that VA properly and efficiently if you don't understand anything about the tools that you want them to use. Number two, these are people. I know it sounds silly for me to tell you this. Treat them with respect. Treat them how you wish you would be treated. Because now you're taking on, for lack of a better word, the moniker of the boss or the CEO of the company. Don't talk down to people. Don't treat them like garbage. You have to treat these people with respect because they want you want the most and the best productivity from the individuals that's going to be working in your company. So treat them with proper respect. Now, I'm going to go and show you an actual post for a cold calling position that we placed out before. And we're going to go ahead and show you the screen right now. And this is an actual post that we did looking for a cold caller. And I'm going to break down this post and show you all the different uh, parts of it, why we ask the different questions and how it can apply for you and your business. Uh, the first of all, the first and most important thing for your post is your title. And we were very specific as to what we're looking for. Real estate, cold caller, and lead person. That's the title that we put out. The next line that we have in this post says, please note, you must read and follow the instructions in the post. If not, you will not be considered for this job. Now, there's a real good reason why I put that in there. And that's because you want to make sure that you have somebody that's very attentive and somebody that's going to actually be very detailed. I can't tell you over my years of hiring virtual assistants, people will send you a template response and they haven't even read what you put into your post. So you want to let them know that if you don't read this post, you may not get this job. And there's a reason why I say that, guys, because... I put specific instructions and actions for our VAs to do inside of the post. So I'm looking to see who is following the instructions and who's not. And those people will be the ones that I will put their resumes at the top of the stack and the other ones at the bottom. First sentence. First of all, excellent English is a must. If you don't speak English, good English, don't apply. Self-explanatory. I'm looking for somebody that is fluent in English. Uh, a lot of the VAs we work with is from countries like the Philippines. It's countries like India, uh, Pakistan. We get individuals from all around the world. Next, you will be on the phone the majority of the time with this position, cold calling sellers. So I'm letting that person know that the main task that they're going to perform is not going to be the only task, but the main task and expertise they should have is cold calling. I'm also letting them know previous successful phone experience is a must. There's a reason why I put that in there. I want to make sure that I only have individuals that have experience in the cold calling arena. Remember, this job is all about cold callers. So you want to make sure that you explicitly say that in your posts. You don't want anybody that has never done it before. You're going to weed those individuals out. You don't want anybody that you have to train. You're going to weed those individuals out. Remember, it's all about specifics when it comes to hiring that person to do this job. Updating podio leads. Podio experience is preferred. Once again, that's another tool that we use in our real estate business. I also want them to have experience doing podio. You see how I'm breaking down explicitly what I want them to do and what the experience that I want them to have. They're going to also need scraping Zillow, Craigslist, and back page for leads. You're talking about bringing in a rock star virtual assistant. So you want them to have various knowledge on different aspects of your business. This post gave them all the details of what we're looking for. Creating training videos is an additional plus. A lot of the things that we do when I work with my VAs, 
I have them create the SOP of the job that they're doing. So if they're working on Podio, I have them create the break the steps that they're following on Podio if I don't provide it to them already. A lot of times we already have standard operating procedures for all the actions that our VAs are doing. But when we bring in a new VA on a new tool that we've just implemented, one of our VAs would be the VA that would create the SOP for that tool. Once again, the standard operating procedure, and we'll have that as a backlog in our business, our real estate business. You must have a weekly Skype or Zoom call with me per week. Now, of course, that's going to be my lead, my operating manager who they're actually having the call with. But it's basically a call that happens every week along with a call that we do every day to find out what the actual day looked like. All of our VAs have to report at the end of their shift what's going on with my operating lead manager. And then that affirmation is geared to me at the end of the week when it comes to overviewing what's being done in our company with the VAs. If there's an issue, a major issue, I'm involved in that issue daily if it happens a day or so. If it's issues that isn't really that big and poor, that important, I'm dealing with it at the end of the week. My operating manager is dealing with it on a daily basis who handles the actual virtual assistant. Now, here's, some, here's where we put the, the, the stake to the, to the pan. Have experience with Mojo Dollar and Call Rail is a must. These are two of the tools that we use in our real estate business. So the person that we hire for this job, they must have experience with the Mojo Dollar and Call Rail. Now, you can also exchange that for Zen Call, or you can exchange it for Podio or whatever tools you want. But your posts should be explicit to these different items that you want the person to use in your business. Now, that's the maximum requirements. Here's the minimum requirements. You must own your personal computer with good and reliable internet access. Because remember, we're talking to some of these individuals in third world countries. So you want to make sure they have high speed internet and a computer to work with. So we put that in the post. Number two, be able to work from a quiet place without interruptions, excess excessive background noise of any kind. See, some of these individuals who are going to respond to your post will be people who work in a call center or have internet access because of an internet cafe. And you don't want to make sure that that person isn't in an area where when they're calling sellers, they hear five or ten different people in the background. So you let them know it may, must be in a quiet place. This is key. An internet speed computer is a must. Not a cell phone. Not an iPad. They must have a computer, laptop, or desktop. Be able to work the night shift. And this is for the, this actual post was in the Philippines. Be able to work night shift in the Philippines from 9.30 p.m. to 6 a.m. There's a 12-hour difference in the Philippines. So actually, what we're talking about is they must work here our hourly time, 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Except it's 9.30 p.m. there to 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, U.S. time, at a minimum of 20 hours per week. I'm being very specific with the hours. And when we post this job out there, it was an individual for $5 an hour. I'm going to say it again. It's for $5 an hour, 20 hours a week. That's what we paid this individual who's in our company right now. Now, four weeks per month. Time off, paid holiday can be discussed further in the interview process. Because remember, this is just the first phase where you're asking for resumes. And I'm going to go over how that process works. So we tell that person that they have to work four weeks per month or five weeks, depending on how many uh, weeks are in that month. And it's going to be based on the hours broken down. And yes, I will pay them paid holidays off. There are certain holidays in different countries that my actual virtual assistants will get that day off and for the holiday that's in that country. Now, number four, own a personal smartphone. 
Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because, for example, a system like Mojo, you must have a smartphone in order to use it through the integration inside of Mojo Dollar. So I want to make sure that that person has all the materials and all the tools for this business when they submit their resume back to me. Willing to learn quickly and take self-initiative to work on your own without close supervision. That's self-explanatory. Willing to install work monitoring system software to ensure the quality of work and proper performance. There's software out there that we have some of our virtual assistants use to monitor actually what they're doing on their computer and or what we call a remote PC. They can log in from the country where they're working in and use different apps and different programs on our computer here in the United States and it won't screw up pro it won't screw up systems that require a US IP address. Now that's getting a little bit advanced. It's not it doesn't really have anything to do with your cold calling virtual assistant. But like I said, we've been using virtual assistants in my business about the last 10 years. Here's some of the best parts of it. Bonuses are paid after closing on deals. And it may vary from $25 to $150 US, depending on the type of size of deal. So I'm letting my virtual assistant know that I will pay them bonuses on deals that we actually close on based on their effort. And here's the secret sauce, guys. You want to incentivize these people. You want to make sure you keep that person around not just six months, 12 months, two years, three years. Because a well-trained person in your company is invaluable. I can't tell you how much money you can make in this business having that person who's an expert at cold calling, who's an expert at podio and doing the different lead management tools and tasks that you need in your business. Here's something that a lot of individuals who hire virtual assistants don't do. And I started doing this about eight years ago. I have my virtual assistants do an exercise that shows me that they can do the job or they are able to do the work. And here's what I mean. I also put in my post, please note, please provide an audio recording of yourself speaking the following phrase. Hello, this is Charles with Chucky by Lucky Houses. My company is looking to buy five to seven houses in your neighborhood, and we just wanted to know if you're interested in selling your home. Now, I just told that person reading my post that I want them to make a recording of them saying that phrase and include it with their resume. Those individuals that do this have read your post all the way through. And it's done exactly what you asked them to do. These individuals will be at the top of my pile. The people who did not do this, who didn't follow the steps that I laid out in this actual, in this actual post, they're not going to be individuals that we're going to call back for an interview. And this is how our process works. First step, we post the job. Second step, we review the resumes and we ask that person to do a specific task or action. Third step, we select at least five to seven resumes from the pile that comes in. We have the actual job open for one week and we select the best five to seven resumes from that one week. We then set up a Zoom meeting with the five to seven people who we selected. And based on how that Zoom meeting goes, we choose three in order, number one, number two, number three, and we hire that first person. The second and third are backup individuals that we put in the side just in case the first person doesn't work out. And that's, my friend, is how you hire a rock star virtual assistant to do business for your company that can generate you revenue. But I'm not finished yet. If you leave a comment below, like the video, come on guys, give me some subscription, give me some subscription love here, I appreciate it. 
I'm going to give you the actual post that we use to hire cold calling people for our actual company. You're going to get that actual post. I'll give it to you. Now, what I also want to show you is some of the actual resumes that came in for this particular job. So let's check them out. When you get the resumes in, and I'm talking about when we use the service onlinejobs.ph or whatever service you use that allow them to send resumes to you, this is what it looks like for us. And like I said, this person, this job is for five dollars an hour, twenty to forty hours per week, cold calling lead person. This person applied. Her, uh, his name is Gianni Omila. He gave me his email address. He's, he's up to 40 hours a week. He has a bachelor degree and four years of virtual assistance training. Keep that in mind. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, Charles, that's what he says. That's okay. That's what anybody says that you're interviewing. So you have to look at everything with a grain of salt. Now, I'm going to read through his actual posts. I'm very interested in being considered. I've worked in a personal assistant, a real estate broker, investor for three years, and I'm on the uh, handle CRMs, email, skip tracing, text letters, also taking calls and setting up appointments, cold calling, and so on. Uh, additionally, I have proficiency in CRMs, FreedomSoft, CallRail, Mojo Dollar, Podio, Ring Central, and Google Tools, as well as Microsoft Office. Computer technology, websites, social media as well as an outstanding ability to work anytime without any pressure. Hardworking, dedication, something that's what I take pride in. So keep in mind that this is just one of the resumes. And this guy basically did everything that I asked for him in this resume. Except he did not give me a recording saying the phrase that I want him to say. So even though this resume sounds good, he's going to the bottom of my list. Let's go down further. This guy, 40 hours a week, bachelor's degree, cold calling, virtual assistant. Here's somebody right here, 30 hours a week, associate degree, data entry, administration assistant, virtual assistant, real estate. Uh, this person actually gave me the actual recording right here. Uh, willing to work, graveyard shift, can work on minimum supervision independently, internet connection speed, 25 MPBS, good speed, that's good speed, laptop, has an HP, um, headset with noise canceling mic, detail, this person would come on, be one of my finalists, I would put this person as one of my finalists, uh, Hannah Share Aradingas, email address right there if I want to communicate with the person, 40 hours a week, bachelor's degree, sales consultant, uh, has all 65 prospects for a Medicare supplement, does not have anything related to what I'm looking for. So this person would not be as one of the persons that would be on my list. Another person, Azalea Chantel Ilibana, uh, the Gmail account, information right there, uh, bachelor's degree, over four years experience, customer service rep, and BPO industry. Uh, hiring manager, uh, MS skills, including uh, customer service, apartment set, appointment setting, reception duties, email handling, bookkeeping, data entry, social media, and so on. Person has technical skills, did not mention anything in here about Mojo Dollar or Podio. Bottom of my list, Mark. Mark has a college, went to college or in college, 40 hours a week, real estate, so on. Greetings, VA, yada, yada, yada. Here's my voice sample. So Mark gave me his voice sample. Mark also says he has these different tools experience, working with call tools, Mojo, and Podio. Persuasion played a huge role in my success when it comes to making an appointment. What also vital to the job is making the leads realize the beauty of partnering with an investor since they don't have to pay for any renovations of the house, realtor fees, closing costs, and so on. So Mark is already speaking the lingo. He knows how an investor is thinking and what an investor is looking for in the individuals that's making calls and have a somewhat of an in, uh, inside level of real estate investing.
So Mark would probably be right now at the top of my pile with the other individuals who I told you guys would be a good candidate. And also, Mark provided the actual recording of his voice. Here's another person, Murray Chris Coles. Murray said, let's see, let's see, 40 hour a week, associate degree, uh, experience. Check this out. Real estate, skip tracing, sales appointment setting, lead generation, business to business sales, technical support, appointment setting, real estate virtual assistant, and now, right here, look at, look, look now, right now, this is my rock star. Look exactly what Murray has supplied me. One, below is the link to my voice recording as per your request. Bam. Two, here's an actual recording of a conversation I had with homeowners. She gave me two of them. Three, I'm also sending you testimonials from my previous clients. She supplied two of them. Let's listen to let's listen to the recording. Let's listen to how she sounds saying the actual phrase I gave her. Let's see what it sounds like. Hello, this is Charles with Chucky Buys Lucky Houses. My company is looking to buy five to seven houses in your neighborhood, and we just wanted to know if you're interested in selling your home. Man, that was flawless. And I mean, the way she pronounced everything, she said she it sounded natural. It didn't sound like she was uh, reading it from a piece of paper, even though it was her first read. Once she says it more, it'll be more fluent. But this person right now is number one on my hiring criteria. When I said we're looking, we'll choose one, two, three, five to seven people that we'll take to the next stage, which would be to have a Zoom meeting with the five to seven applicants that we like. So this young lady is definitely, definitely speaking our lingo here. Now, let's see what she says in her resume. I'm Chris. I used to work in the BPO industry for more than 11 years. I did telemarketing for a U.S. telephone company. I worked in sales, catering to Sprint and Dow consumers and business accounts for a total of seven years. I'm a go-getter. I love talking to people and building rapport with them. Sales is my passion. And the reason why is I like the feeling of being very successful in sales person. If you've seen Boiler Room starring Giovanni Ribizzi, uh Vin Diesel, and Leonardo DiCaprio, The Wolf of Wall Street, then you know what I'm talking about. What makes one effective as a salesperson is letting them know the benefits they would get from the product that I'm selling. And what's in it for them. Think about that, guys. She just basically made me melt in my seat with what she just said in regards to how she look at sales. Ooh, this is a rock star. I tell you, I work with a couple of real estate investors as a cold caller and lead manager. I will talk to homeowners using Mojo Dollar and ask if they're interested in selling their properties. I let them know the, that we buy properties cash and as is, and that we cover all the closing costs so they wouldn't have to spend a dime on it. And of course, that they wouldn't have to spend on commissions and realtor fees. As a lead manager, what I do is the following cold call religiously to existing leads or potential sellers who are already in Podio, which was the CRM that we were using. These are the four pillars to consider. Motivation, the condition, how soon they can sell, and price high equity. Now, I have DSL internet connection, 75 Mbps. That, my friends, is fast. So that I won't be a problem for time, I'd love to talk with you about your business. Give me a chance. Now remember, $5 an hour. No less than 20 hours per week. Yeah, I can go on and on. These are other resumes that came in. Uh, this guy is Judel Marzan. Uh, his email account and everything came with it. So the point I'm trying to make here is this. You have to be specific. You have to learn how to read over your actual resumes. And the process that you should follow while reading over the resumes is simple. 
you choose the best five to seven resumes based on the most complete uh, performance of everything that you want that person to do. That should be spelled out in their resume. If they're not coming, calling, coming back with all the things that you need done in their resume, that person does not get in your list. Remember, you're choosing five to seven out of your list of prospects. Then with that five to seven, you're going to set up a Zoom call. And in that Zoom call, you're going to narrow it down to the top three. And you're going to hire number one. That's your process. Now, you got two backups just in case. Because nothing's nothing's perfect. Just in case something happens with the first one. So, follow those steps. You will hire the best qualified people for your company. Now, this is Charles Blair, the Mad Scientist. Leave a comment below if you want to get your hands on my actual post that we use to hire cold callers. And don't forget, if you subscribe to my channel, I got a second bonus for you, an additional bonus along with that script that I'm going to give you. So this is Charles Blair, the Mad Scientist. On behalf of my beautiful wife, Tammy Blair, and I, take care, and I'll see you from Baltimore in the next video. Bye-bye.